Listen up guys, because I bet you didn't see this triple threat match sneaking up on you. Me on my vacation again at Top 10 Nerd with a Bumblebee advanced screening Easter Egg Smackdown. I mean, I've got to slide a few wrestling references in because, come on guys, John Cena. But yeah, you heard that correctly. We had the esteemed privilege to catch a one day advanced screening of the sixth installment in the Transformers franchise. And being a film set in 1987, there's some gloriously nostalgic references that make for some grade A Easter eggs. Well, I guess we better take a look. What's going on guys and welcome back to the nerdiest channel on YouTube, Top 10 Nerd. For one time only, I'll be your humble host Jack Finch as we take a look at the Top 10 Bumblebee Easter Eggs. Roll the clip. Before we dive into this video guys, we've got to give a massive shout out to our sponsors Loot Crate, who have just so happened to have curated one of the most awesome collections of nerd artifacts that I've ever seen, and you can only get your hands on it if you sign up now. Their latest theme is Scavenge, and it features some epic loot from Dungeons and Dragons, Escape from New York, Fallout, and of course, Transformers Bumblebee. Each crate is valued at over 45 bucks, and if you subscribe now, you get the chance to win the Mega Crate. A monthly prize of legendary loot valued at over $2,500. Time is of the essence though because their scavenge crate is a one time deal and it's only on sale until the 19th of December after which it's gone forever, sealed into the vault of Time Gone Legend. Make sure to click our special top 10 nerd code for 15% off your first sub and you can get your hands on some seriously epic loot. Seriously. Snake Pliskin, D&D, Apocalyptic Wasteland, Bumblebee. Can I get this crate too? Now, I'd like to preface this entire video with the reassurance that we'll try and keep plot spoilers to a minimum. We're not in the business for ruining a blockbuster film before you've even had the chance to see it, but there may be a few close encounters, so you've been duly warned. On a whole, we were actually pleasantly enthralled by Travis Knight's brand new foray into the Transformers franchise, taking it back to its roots via everyone's favorite VW Beetle, Bumblebee. If you're on the fence about this film, then don't be, because even if you're not the hottest fan of Transformers, it's worth it just for the 80s nostalgia. Kicking off at number 10, the first Autobots. And the most reassuring part of Bumblebee is that it does a stand-up job of staying true to its original source material. And what better way to do that than by making sure that the whole transforming part is true to its word. If you know anything about the original Hasbro toy line, you'll know that the first 10 Autobots originally released in the US in 1984 were all automobiles. Amongst them were our boys Bumblebee, Wheeljack, and Optimus Prime, sticking to their respective modes of transformation transportation. This was before the days of Six Switch and Hexadecimal, and it was nice to see some good old fashioned Autobots doing what they do best, turning into motorized automobiles and saving the world. Next up at number 9, the first Decepticons. And of course it couldn't be true to the Autobots without also being true to the first Decepticons. Whereas the Autobots had the motorized vehicle market covered, the Decepticons were a little bit more devious in their transformations. Amongst the original Hasbro release in 1984, the Decepticons were all strictly either aircraft, weapons and communication equipment. And while the film has that whole subtle nod covered, with Blitzwing, Shockwave and Soundwave. Part of the Generation 1 toy line release featured Decepticons that turned into regular household objects. Shockwave would turn into a weird ray gun and Soundwave would essentially turn into a cassette tape player where he interacted differently with varying tapes. Of course, these little guys make an appearance, although they're a little bit more mobile, shall we say. Coming in at number eight, first ever triple changes. Kinda. And granted, this perhaps isn't technically the first time a Transformer has pulled off the coveted triple change in the film continuity franchise, but it is the first time where we actively see it in action from start to finish multiple times. Enter, Shatter and Dropkick, Bumblebee's Decepticon enemies, voiced by Angela Bassett and Justin Theroux respectively, who are sent to Earth to blow our favourite VW Beetle to smithereens, and also have the overpowered advantage of taking to both land and air in one seamless fashion. Shatter takes on the form of both a Plymouth Satellite and a Harrier Jump Jet, and Dropkick takes on the form of an AMC Javelin and a Bell AH-1 Super Cobra attack helicopter. Stylish and deadly, just how the Decepticons like it. Next up at number 7, Mr. T Cereal. Of course it wouldn't be an 80s nostalgia throwback without everyone's two favourite commodities, cereal 
and Mr. T. It just couldn't be an 80s themed movie without the main man B.A. Baracus rearing his head on a breakfast cereal box to set the scene. Granted, it's a pretty throwaway moment, but when the movie's lead girl Charlie Watson, played by the rising star Hayley Steinfeld, skips into her kitchen to grab the most important meal of the day, her first choice is Quaker's Mr. T crispy sweet corn and oat cereal, fortified with B vitamins and iron. With Mr. T cereal, it's getting on the team, the team that knows how cool breakfast can be. He pities the fool that skips breakfast. Swinging in at number six, take me to your leader. It's a pretty hotly debated topic as to where the phrase take me to your leader actually first came about. Some believe it to have originated in a 1953 cartoon by Alex Graham in the New Yorker magazine, where two aliens are standing in a field asking a horse to kindly take us to your president. Well, since then, it's been the tagline for any and every extraterrestrial being that's found themselves on planet Earth trying to get someone to claim responsibility for the rest of us. The film's two Decepticons are no exception, and after they hurtle down through the atmosphere hunting for Bumblebee, they stumble upon a perplexed looking US military. They didn't forget their manners though, and instead of shoot first, ask questions later, they utter the iconic five word phrase. Yeah, it's kind of corny, but it's also great. Next up, at number five. Cliff Jumper. Yeah, we kind of hammered the point home that the Bumblebee movie tries its damnedest to stick closely to the first generation source material, and so of course it has to feature Bumblebee's spiritual other half in an emotionally charged scene. Enter Cliff Jumper, the impulsive and often reckless Autobot version of Scrappy Doo. Although only briefly in a scene where Dropkick and Shatter are interrogating Cliff Jumper to find out Bumblebee's location, he sends his reckless buddy an audio transmission of none other than the intro theme to the popular 1980s sitcom. Cheers. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. So it's kind of a double whammy of a reference. It's also awesome to see Cliff Jumper make an appearance in the Bumblebee movie, as his character was famously associated with just being a red repaint of the classic Hasbro Bumblebee toys. Always second best, buddy. Coming in at number four. The 80s soundtrack. You don't get to be a prequel set in 1987 unless you've got the soundtrack to back it up. And I'm happy to reveal that Bumblebee goes the distance and then just keeps going and going. It's no closely guarded secret that Bumblebee lost the ability to speak after a great Autobot battle, and his main directive, other than just being a great guy, is to one day get his voice back. While this comes in as a minor plot point throughout the events of the movie, but also features as the perfect way to subtly slide in a stellar 80s soundtrack. When Charlie Watson replaces Bumblebee's damaged voice box with a transistor radio, he delivers Aha's take on me, perhaps a little too much, but you get the point. Also when things get a little sad, he plays the Smiths, because you know, the Smiths are better enjoyed with a little sadness. Swinging in at number three, E.T. And of course, perhaps we are hammering home the point a little too much, but you can't make an 80s nostalgia movie without referencing arguably the most iconic 80s movie of all time, Steven Spielberg's E.T. The Extraterrestrial. And essentially, they're kind of the same film. Weird alien crash lands on planet Earth, young Earthling finds them, tries to hide them in their house, calamity ensues. It's kind of very obvious reference, but when Charlie heads out to work, Bumblebee is left alone in the garage, and what plays out is an awkwardly disastrous but awesome reference to Elliot and E.T. After following a dog into Charlie's house, he smashes the place up a bit, opens the fridge, and helps himself to a can of tab. Yeah the holy grail of the 1980s. Next up at number two, Breakfast Club. And I may have told a mistruth in our last point because E.T. is tied as the most iconic 80s film of all time, because how could we forget John Hughes' 1985 teen titan of a comedy drama, The Breakfast Club. Well, good news, because Bumblebee didn't forget. Again, it's corny as hell, but come on, corny and 1987 go hand in hand. At the end of the final battle between Bumblebee and his buddies versus the overpowered Decepticons, everyone has changed and learned something for the better, albeit a little more harrowing than just a Saturday afternoon in detention. Well, when John Cena salutes the cute yellow Volkswagen, Bumblebee replies with no other than the same iconic fist thrust in the air that Judd Nelson's John Bender made famous in the hearts of rebellious teams across the planet. Don't you forget about me. And finally, our number one spot, who's that truck? To be honest, if you've got this far without being shocked and awed by mildly infuriating spoilers, then I'll think you'll be content with kind of knowing how this film ends. To be honest, no one really watches Transformers for its jaw-dropping character reveals, do they? We just want to see giant robots beat each other up, then turn into an attack helicopter and fly off into the sunset. It's simplistic, but it's also strangely beautiful. And I, for one, wouldn't want it any other way. While throughout the events of Bumblebee, we see a few glimpses of the main man Optimus Prime 
time doing his business back on Cybertron. And we already know in advance that Bumblebee heralds the arrival of the Autobots on Earth. So after the films climactic ending, Bumblebee scans himself a yellow and black Camaro, upgrading from his Volkswagen much to Charlie Watson's dismay, and then he drives out across the Golden Gate Bridge before slowing down in traffic and pulling up beside a vaguely familiar semi truck. Who's that truck? Well, of course it's Optimus Prime. Autobots roll out. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video, folks. Cheers for sticking around all the way to the end. We'd just like to give one more huge thank you to our absolutely awesome sponsor, Loot Crate. Make sure to check the info box down below so you can get your hands on possibly the most impressive assortment of nerd artifacts that I've ever seen. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and ding that subscribe bell. You've been watching Top 10 Nerd. I've been your host, Jack Finch, and until next time, you take it easy.